Placing the upper radiator hose on an M62 engine. Alright, these clips actually you just have to hook them and give them a lift up to unlock them. Just use a pick and once they're lifted up you can usually wiggle them free. Sometimes you need to use a screwdriver to kind of help them along. Or a pick. Or maybe a screwdriver. Oh, there we and go. There it goes. That's one section of it because the other section is still attached. I see it. This is the section that broke off. So again, on this side, it also has its same style clip. So you just have to lift up to unlock. You can take it all the way off. moving. Is it? Yeah, it moves a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see. You want to get a screwdriver? Yeah, in? I think so. Alright, with a screwdriver, again, if you, you can use that to kind of lever in there. Let's see if I can get this. And if you give it like a little bit of a twist while you wiggle the the hose usually you can work it free. This one probably has like 200,000 miles on it. Maybe. It's quite possible. Although I doubt it. It's making me want to take the engine cover off. takes two seconds. Yes. There it goes. It was stubborn. Then you have the additional hose that goes down to the, the alternator. alternator. This one's water-cooled. Same deal. Lift up on the clip. And with any luck, this one comes off easier. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Okay, using a little bit of white lift or petroleum jelly, put a little bit on the seal. Just a and little bit. that's going to help it just slide together. Now you can use a little bit of coolant also if you want to use coolant. And putting it on is actually a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Not and you're on. not going to play with those connectors. You're going to leave them all the way seated. And you're just going to basically push things on. That one clicked. Line that one up. There's a little locator tab. And I just heard a click. Give it a wiggle. Yep. And then coming back here to the, upper, to the radiator. Click. Done. That's it, replacing the upper radiator hose. Now we have to bleed and fill it with coolant. Okay. All right, open up the reservoir, and you're gonna to wanna to remove the bleed screw, which this plastic bleed screw I like to replace because I've seen them just crack after you've reinstalled them, even if you don't over tighten them. And uh, then sometimes when they crack, it starts steaming out through the little crack and actually bonds to the expansion tank and sometimes you actually have to replace the expansion tank when that happens. I'd rather pay a dollar for that little plastic bleed screw. Mm -hmm. That washer stay in there from that bleed screw too? It did. So you got to make sure when you pour the coolant in it doesn't come out on you. There is a little washer in there that should be on top of that bleed screw. We can use our pick Yeah, to we get can that go ahead and take that out and put it over. The bleed screw like it's supposed to be. Sweet. Now bleeding this engine is actually very simple. 
you're going to fill it until it overflows from the bleed screw hole, which we'll have to go get some more coolant. More than likely. Understood. Continue to fill. We've already spent some time filling it because it was basically bone dry. Okay. Not completely. Massage the upper radiator hose. Get those last bubbles out. actually hear what this sounds like before. Yeah, you can't hear it over shop noise no. normally. That's pretty good. Yep, I would say so. Now after you're done, you just install that bleeder screw back in and snug it down gently. It is plastic, so just basically that seal is holding everything in place. And radiator cap. So then I'd recommend running it up to temperature, let it cool, and then recheck your level and see if you need a top off before you take it for a long drive. And make sure to use the correct coolant, which is, there is a BMW coolant, ethylene glycol based, and you don't want to mix coolants. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching.